Jesus' friends, his disciples, are hiding in the upstairs room again. It's been a tumultuous journey. They saw Jesus die, and it was horrible. And then he came back to life, and he was with them again. And he ate with them, and he talked with them. He spent time with them, and it was wonderful. And now he's gone again. In fact, they saw him rise into the sky. Nobody rises into the sky. They have no idea what is happening. The doors are locked. The windows are locked. They're so scared. This seems so impossible. What's going to become of them? The people who killed Jesus know them. What, what will they do? When suddenly the room, the door bursts open and a wind comes in and moves through the room. In fact, it bursts open the windows too. And suddenly they're speaking languages they had never heard before. Spanish. Todos fueron llenos del Espíritu Santo y comenzaron a hablar en otras lenguas, según el Espíritu les daba habilidad para expresarse. French. Et Dieu fera tout en vie du Saint-Esprit et commença a parler de langues étrangères selon que l'Esprit les faisait parler. Mereka semua ni dipenuhi oleh roh suci dan mula ia bercakap dalam bermacam-macam bahasa lain. Mereka bercakap menurut apa yang diberikan oleh roh itu kepada mereka untuk diucapkan. Latin, et replite sunt omnis spiritu sancto, et coperent loci varis linguis, prut spiritus sanctus debat illique illis. German, un sie werden alle mit heiligen Geist erfüll und fingen an, mit anderen zungen zu reden, wie die Geist ihnen gab, Auszusprechen. Norwegian. Ag de ble alla filt med den hilig and ag de vignette atala i anda tunga. Et alt eta sum andan gav dem atala. Armenian. Yevamenkin of Su Propio Bebsetan, Uraskiris, Eskusan Urish, Yuzonarov Hosil, Inchbes Hokin Ivens Hosil Uda. They're shocked. They understand each other. How is this possible? They've never heard most of these languages. They've never, could never begin to understand them, but it's all made clear. And in that moment, Peter rises up and begins to speak to the crowd that is gathered below and begins to tell the story of Jesus. I wondered as I read this gospel reading and thought about it as we became close to Pentecost, I wondered what that was like for us now, having been isolated for so long, and suddenly now back, hearing voices that we have not heard for over a year, seeing people that we have not been near for over a year, getting hugs again, 
And I think that we share something with the disciples. We understand that feeling of astonishment. And suddenly the world that we thought we once knew is not the same. It's different. And I realized that this is a good time to be celebrating Pentecost, to be celebrating the movement of the Spirit, because God is moving now. Things are changing, and God is with us. And, but more importantly, God is calling us to be a part of this change, to make a world that listens to each other, to make a world that makes companions of those who were strangers, of those who don't speak our languages, don't understand who we are, don't understand what we do. A world where we can solve problems that no one thought were possible to solve and confront things that we never thought we would have to confront. We have come out of this resilient, just like those first disciples. And I'm wondering what God is calling you to do in this time. I wonder what God is calling you to speak to in a new way, like these disciples did. And I'm wondering where God will take you in this next year. Open your heart to that wind that blew open the windows and doors. It circles around us. Even now, it has never left. Once it was unloosed in the world, it's been here. So welcome it. Amen. <laughs>